Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the YouTube channel Nonconformist Conscience and also the webpage Nonconformist Conscience. Today, on September 30th, here, I mean, August 30th, oh, goodness, August 30th, here in the United States, we have a full moon happening in the sign of Pisces. Before I jump into that, I want to talk a little bit about how Uranus station retrograde yesterday because it really energizes this full moon and then I'm going to talk about this full moon break down what is going on and then I will touch on Venus station direct and then Jupiter station retrograde the very next day after Venus goes direct um there can be quite a bit of information during this video so Let's start with Uranus retrograde. What is Uranus? Uranus is the ruler of the sign of Aquarius. Uranus and Aquarius correlate and correspond to liberation from the known. So the known and the familiar, which is actually what we usually feel or think of as our, our security. We're humans. What feels secure is what is known and familiar. That doesn't always mean that it is healthy or the best thing for us. Uranus also is a planet of rebellion. It is a planet of revolution. It is a planet of individuation, a planet of objectivity, awareness, transformation. And yeah, I think I can stop right there. You guys get the, gi the gist of this. So Uranus has been in the sign of Taurus for quite some, some time now. And with Uranus transiting the sign of Taurus, we have been working on, if you have been consciously utilizing this energy, some of us, you're still going to feel this if you're just now stepping into this, but this has been a time of really liberating from any type of conditions that have been getting in the way of having a healthy relationship with self, Taurus. It has really been about objectifying what our values and needs have been. Most of us, what we have learned to value and need has been conditioned. And so there's this objectification that has been going on because just because something's conditioned and we're taught that it's what we need or what we value, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is in resonance with our personal truth or our soul and our soul, I should say. And so we have been really liberating from old conditioned values and needs as a way to experience the inner communion of ourselves to establish more self-reliance because as we liberate from old conditions that revolve around our values and our needs and what gives us meaning, that has stemmed from us objectifying them and then coming into an awareness, the individuation kind of takes place and we start to say through objectifying this, is that really what I need? What do I need on a personal level? What do I value on a personal level? Are these my values or have I been conditioned to value this? I think a lot of people experience this also during their Saturn retrograde. I mean, their Saturn return, excuse me. There's so many retrogrades going on here right now. So, ugh, which retrogrades are also a Uranian kind of function because what they do is we relive, redo, re-experience in order to resolve something. And it helps us liberate from those old dynamics as a way of resolving them. So we have a ton of planets retrograde right now. We're most likely all feeling this on some level. We are re-experiencing things. They are circling back around because as a universal experience, our souls like to test ourselves because if we are meant to evolve, we can feel like we are really liberating from old dynamics 
but in a very Plutonian Scorpio type of way, the same dynamics can circle back around as a way to see, did we truly integrate this through liberation? Did we come into full awareness? Were we able to resolve this? And so these retrogrades, I like to think of them as a test. So with Uranus retrograde, there's an emphasis on are you going to walk your talk? <laughs> like, have you learned these lessons? Are you, after you've come into awareness, have you liberated from these old values and needs? Have you established and thought for yourself, what, what do I need? What, what really aligns with me? And have you been able to integrate that? This is a time during this Uranus retrograde that we will re-experience these dynamics within relationships with others, especially since the South Node is in Libra, both Uranus and the South Node ruled by Venus, as a way to see, are you going to do a, a distorted Libra? Are you going to abandon yourself? Or are you going to be able to stay self-reliant within relationships? Are there imbalances within your life Libra, that you are needing to learn how to have balance and harmony through listening to your inner voice, Uranus, and Taurus, through objectifying that inner voice. So, or are you going to listen to the voices of others and not take your advice? There's so many different ways that this can go down, but this Uranus retrograde period is really going to help us to continue a liberation and an individuation cycle and it's more emphasized so if you are experiencing things circling back around it's really good to ask yourself why am i re-experiencing this what did i learn from the past have i really resolved this do i need to do what i did in the past again or do i need to make a different choice as a way to resolve this if i'm being tested by these situations a situation can roll back around and look a little bit differently um so yeah this is this uranus and taurus retrograde that gets me to today today is this pisces full moon it's a blue moon everyone's been talking about it it is quite dynamic so it's really really good to keep this in mind right now as I talk about this I already said it a little bit in the beginning but Uranus Aquarius is about transformation to change form right to transform that means that you're radically altering something whereas Uranus and Taurus has been a time period of us radically altering and transforming our relationship to self Pisces and Neptune is about transcending that means to overcome limitations so there is a difference here, and I think some people get this confused sometimes, and so I wanted to say that, but both are very activated in this chart of the full moon. I mean, there's a yacht or what we would call a finger of God happening between Neptune, the south node, and Libra, and Uranus. And so I will get into that in just a second, but I, I did, I wanted to speak about that just a little bit and all of us kind of keep this in the back of our minds as I am talking about this full moon and the energies of it. So a full moon, as a recap, is when the moon opposes the sun and also is about a culmination of emotional dynamics that we started working on six months ago. So think back to February 20th of this year. That is when we had the new moon in Pisces. That new moon was actually trining the south node in Scorpio at that time. And 
I wanted to pull that chart for just a second. Yes. And we also had, you know, Uranus uh, in conversation with that new moon. So it's kind of pulling all of these energetics up again. So think about what you started working on, you know, six months ago around February 20th. At that time, we were called to start a culmination Pisces process by getting to the bottom of our emotional and psychological dynamics of what constituted inner security, South Known and Scorpio, and really, really getting to the bottom of that. So now this is all culminating. And when we have a full moon and the moon is opposing the sun, sun being in the sign of Virgo, Pisces polarity, we're also called to throw something off. That is what an opposition can mean. And so if we're looking at what we're needing to throw off in order for a culmination process to take place right now, we are looking at transcending limitations moon and Pisces it is also conjunct Saturn, which is in Pisces and retrograde through re-experiencing how we've structured our reality and the need to dissolve that which is not in alignment with, with who we are in a natural sense. Saturn and Pisces is also about looking at the structure of our consciousness. Saturn in general is about the structure of our consciousness. How our consciousness is structured, that's how we will structure our reality because it conditions our reality through our own perception. Saturn and Pisces is really about looking at man-made laws and constructs. It's also being confronted with how we've structured reality through our ideals. So what we are thinking is perfect. The moon conjunct Saturn is ruled by Neptune and Pisces, which is also retrograde. So there's another archetype of re-experiencing in order to resolve, in order to culminate. And Neptune in the sign of Pisces is you know, wanting us to honor the truth and it is wanting us to dissolve any type of illusions or ideals that keep us from individuating, transforming. And it helps us to transcend old limitations. The sun, which is opposing the moon and Saturn is in Virgo. It is the ruler of Venus retrograde. So as we are called to creatively self-actualize through understanding ourselves, Venus retrograde and the sign of Leo, through having self-love and self-dignity and looking at what self-worth is, all of these Leonian kind of qualities, while we are in this state of becoming, of reliving and re-experiencing old relational dynamics as a review process, which is further emphasized by Pluto, retrograde in Capricorn, squaring the nodal axis, emphasis on the south node in Libra, also being ruled by that Venus. This Venus ties in the sun, which ties in this full moon as well. This sun is ruled by Mercury retrograde, in the sign of Virgo. So choices around discernment and around not denying oneself or making excuses, especially pertaining to the truth, are really going to come up and during this and be activated during this full moon cycle. So Mercury, Virgo, and the sixth house are archetypes of self-denial. Capricorn can be judgment, judging oneself, shame. Virgo can also be guilt. So we can see how this is kind of corresponding with this full moon energy. 
and the need to throw off if you're feeling guilt, shame, the need to throw off if you're denying yourself, the need to create discernment and not make excuses. We are also looking at correct judgment with Pluto and Capricorn. And, you know, it's in a conversation with Pallas Athene. It's also in a conversation with Uranus. Um, so there's this liberation process that's wanting to take place through us making correct judgments and creating, you know, making us really understand where we are being autonomous or where we are depending on others. There is a need to throw off the imbalance is created through depending on others, not having self-sovereignty, where we've created interdependencies on others through denying oneself and also through our ideals of what relationships are. This is, you know, um, I like to call it checking boxes. A lot of you guys have heard me say that. That can be coming up for a lot of people right now. I've been taught that if I do X, Y, and Z, then I will be happy. That's an ideal, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be true. So a lot of people are being confronted with this right now, being confronted with their own ideals. I've had a couple of clients lately who are being confronted with their ideals as relationships are ending for them and it's been really interesting because you know recently I heard someone say I wanted to be with this person and I got with him and whenever I got with him I wanted it to be a serious relationship and it was and then Whenever it became serious, I wanted to have a family with them and to get married. And I got that. And now it's falling apart. And it's because of giving ultimate meaning into what that relationship meant. And also there's a lot of the confrontation is that, right? There's a lot more that goes into that um, experience for that person. But it was more of, you know... This is a time period where a lot of people are being confronted with the imbalances in their relationships. Are you able to hear what another is needing? Is someone else able to hear what you're needing? Are you able to do that for yourself? Are you able to be dependent from another while being in relationship? A lot of stuff for people are coming up with friendships. It's not even just around like romantic partnerships. It's also friendships. I know a lot of people who've had roommates and all of a sudden they are moving out because they're seeing the imbalances and inequality within those relationships. And they are no longer wanting to make excuses or deny themselves. So they're being confronted with the truth of their situation and there are also being confronted with their ideals of what they thought that that experience was going to be. So during this full moon, all of this is wanting to be culminated so that way we can regain um, a harmonization with life and with our relationship with self and with relationships with others. So we also have Mars and a relationship or a conversation with Saturn. Mars is in the sign of Libra as well. It is in a conversation called an inconjunct. So this has a Virgo-like feel to it. A lot of Virgo Pisces kind of aspect phases are coming up during this full moon. So it just re-emphasizes the energy of this full moon in Pisces. So an inconjunct is about <clears throat> readjustment, realignment, self-improvement very much like Virgo is so it can induce essential humility um Mars and Libra in conjunct Saturn and the sign of Pisces retrograde can be experiencing dynamics within relationships 
it just really reemphasizes where ideals have happened, how we've structured our relationships, desires to break free from that, desires to be dependent within relationship, Mars, Libra. Um, and it's ruled by, Mars is ruled by this Venus retrograde in Leo. So decisions made revolving around, you know, am I going to be in self-love and self-respect and self-dignity, or am I going to abandon myself in order to keep up this ideal image of what this looks like? Am I holding on to something that maybe shouldn't be held on to? And the need to culminate the why. Why is this happening and what is going on so that a self-refinement and self-improvement can take shape and place. We also have Mercury in Virgo retrograde in conjunct Chiron and Aries, which is retrograde and ruled by this Mars in Libra. And so there can be a need to have self-improvement and self-healing and making choices around that and taking it step by step that revolve around where old wounds, Chiron, have taken place around our independence or the lack of it, seeing as Mars is the ruler of Chiron and Libra. So where did we lose our independence within relationships? Mercury in conjunct Chiron tying into that Mars? Have we denied ourselves this? Have we been making excuses? Where do we feel powerless to be independent? And why? And how can we self-improve upon that? So there is a relearning revolving around this and also a restructuring taking place through transcending these limitations, seeing as Saturn is conjunct this moon in the sign of Pisces. So these are all reliving, re-experiencing something that we've already been working on, whether it be because we didn't resolve it or we're needing to retest ourselves to see if we are having Pluto and Capricorn self-determination to do so, to change, to, to evolve. Um, and then we have, I'm looking at my list over here. Jupiter is trying Mercury, um, which this is a pretty beautiful aspect, but there can also be a resistance seeing as this is a first quarter trying. So things could be coming to an evolutionary standstill for some, revolving around the need to expand upon the knowledge that they've been gaining throughout this time period, this, this past six month period since the new moon in Pisces happened in February. Where do you need to self-actualize? Where do you need to step up and live your authenticity in the here and now? Jupiter, as a way to create more self-reliance, have you been denying that? Have you been making excuses within a variety of relationships? And where do you need to culminate these dynamics? How can you self-improve upon this? How can you take the information that you've been gaining have discernment around it and then expand upon it as a way to continue self-improvement and self-reliance. Jupiter oftentimes is also a lot of people love talking about it being a benefic. In my experience, I have Jupiter retrograde in Taurus on my ascendant. Um, in my experience, Ju Jupiter is awesome, but it's like the gift bearer or the bearer of gifts. But in order to receive the gift, oftentimes you have to let go something else. And a trine correlates with this because a trine will speak to letting go and creating an opening within in order to have new information come in to expand upon it. So sometimes we have to let go of what an opinion or what we once considered a fact to be in order to be able to expand upon that knowledge. And so this can be coming up for people with this trine. Where is their resistance? Where do you need to let go of something because you've been denying it? Have you been able to act in your authenticity or have you been doing distorted Libra and abandoning oneself? 
for the sake of whatever relationship. Um, we also have Uranus trying Pallas Athene. Pallas Athene is the octave transformer of Mercury and Uranus, Uranus being the higher mind, Mercury being logical linear mind. Also, Jupiter is our right brain, our intuition, by the way. So there's this whole conversation going on between Jupiter, Mercury, Uranus, and uh, Pallas Athene, seeing as Mercury and Pallas are conjunct, and Jupiter and Uranus are moving into a conjunction. They won't really be in it, but they're close enough to say this is what that is, is where do we need to act on the wisdom from our higher mind that we're receiving from our intuition instead of denying it? Where are we having bursts of insights about our situation? And are you denying it or are you acting on it? How can that help you expand upon what you're experiencing as a way to have more self-reliance, as a way to know oneself? This is also understanding one's own personal truths. It's very different than a belief. A belief is not inherently truthful all the time. Jupiter is about being honest and authentic and sincere. It's also, in order to do that, we have to know whom we are. We have to know our personal truths, Jupiter and Taurus. And so this is very emphasized right now. And with Uranus in a pretty close proximity to Jupiter, we are to liberate from old beliefs that have been conditioned or projected upon us that are getting in the way of us knowing our truths, where it's creating us denying ourselves this because maybe we have created a self-fulfilling prophecy that can be a Jupiter Taurus dynamic or ninth house dynamic. Self-fulfilling prophecy meaning someone told me who I was at some point in my life and I chose to believe them. Where, if that's you, what is that? What type of objectivity can you bring in to create an awareness around this? Pallas Athene in this mix there can be bursts of insights as a way to have a transformative experience revolving around these types of dynamics. We're creating self-fulfilling prophecies that can create imbalances in relationships with others. And seeing as Uranus and Jupiter are in the sign of Taurus, it most definitely creates imbalances within our relationship to self. So this is a time to really culminate this as also a self-fulfilling prophecy really comes from some type of condition, Saturn, construct that is man-made. It's not a natural truth. So this, again, re-emphasizes this whole full moon conjunct Saturn and Pisces retrograde. So being confronted with all of this information right now. Um. Neptune is sextile Uranus, and both are in conjunct the South Node and also Ceres. So this really speaks to this transformative dynamic, transformation of our inner relationship through re-experiencing old dynamics and relationship with others as a way to regain something that maybe we lost seeing as Ceres is conjunct that South Node. And it comes through objective awareness. And whenever we have Uranian objective awareness about some type of dynamic going on inside of us, because we've had the counterpoint of experiencing something with another, we can then not only transform, but we can transcend the limitations of those dynamics through the awareness that comes through the Uranian function. And that's the sextile between Uranus and Neptune. And this also corresponds with our ideals and illusions that have perpetuated these imbalances where we might have abandoned ourselves. So this is really, really highlighted and emphasized within this chart. Depending on where all of this falls in your chart, this could be looking at relationships with your job, your relationship with people at your job. This can be looking at relationships with family members or friendships or 
a variety of ways that this can come up right now, where one can feel disillusioned and understand and come into awareness of where imbalances are and the need to transcend those limitations of the past and to shed the skins of the past of where we've over-identified with these dynamics. So I saw this quote that just so speaks to this chart, especially seeing as there's so much, so many dynamics coming up around self-worth lack of self-worth, self-reliance, codependency, the need to be independent, the need to look at where interdependencies have been created, the need to look at where we are projecting expectations. This god or finger of god between Uranus, Neptune, and the south known and Ceres also reflects to only be attached to the truth and to detach from Uranus in conjunct the South Node, expectations or outcomes. And that is a way to transcend our limitations by only being attached to the truth as it's occurring. And then the sign of Libra, so often I see people who have an emphasis on their seventh house, a lot of planets in Libra, Pluto in Libra, especially. Um, there can be this self-abandonment that happens. And the need to throw off the voices of others or the opinions of others and their projected expectations of us. And there is this quote that I read, and it speaks to this so simply, but it says, obedience violates consent. When you are abiding by someone and not relying on self, it violates your own consent. It allows people to walk all over you or to take advantage. It creates imbalances. So this can totally be coming up for a lot of people right now. So all of this is the need to dissolve these dynamics and to culminate them. And this started, like I said, six months ago when we were asked during the new moon in Pisces to really objectify our relationship to self and to get to the bottom of our psychological and emotional dynamics that dealt with where we had ideals or have experienced disillusionment or have bought into some type of conditioned illusion that society, family, religion has told us to buy into. And the past six months, we have been being confronted with this in some type of way. And now with Venus retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Uranus retrograde, Neptune retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Mercury retrograde, we are really re-experiencing all of these dynamics as a way to culminate and resolve them. And a need to use the wisdom that we've been gaining through our direct experience to discern revolving around this information and then to make correct judgment calls. This is a way to culminate the past it's through making new choices. Mercury being the ruler of this sun that is opposing the moon that is conjunct Saturn really corresponds to a time where we are being confronted with what choice do I make revolving around where imbalances have occurred and how have I structured my reality? And how do I need to dissolve these dynamics so that way a restructuring can take place? How do I hold myself accountable? This can be really scary if I've always depended on others to tell me what to do. That's a form of denying oneself. This can also be where I'm only wanting to see the best in others or the potential instead of being attached to the truth. So you're being attached to an expectation or an outcome of an ideal of that person or, you know, friend, family, whomever. And this is a time that we're being asked to culminate and dissolve these as a way to transcend these prior limitations. 
So on the third, Jupiter is going to station, meaning that it's going to stand still in the sky. And it's going to do that for 24 hours. So it's going to really emphasize the energy of Jupiter and Taurus. How do I act within honesty, sincerity, and authenticity by staying within my own personal truths, not abandoning myself? How can I expand upon the information that I've been learning about myself? That same day, Venus is going to station direct. So all we've been learning since July 22nd, when Venus retrograded, we started this whole cycle. Now it's, you know, whatever we've been reviewing regarding our relationship to self and how we have been confronted with imbalances within our relationships with the other people, now is the time to really start to implement what we've been learning. And then the very next day, Jupiter is going to retrograde. So it's going to give us a chance to re-experience these dynamics, seeing as Venus is still the ruler of Jupiter, as a way to test ourselves. Are you going to remain in authenticity? Are you going to remain in your personal truths and live honestly? This helps us dissolve old dynamics through culminating them, transcending the limitations. And it also helps us to expand upon what we've been revealing. So it's another individuating function that is going to be taking place. So I want all of us to be aware of this and to work with this energy. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom whenever we are attached to the truth. When we deny the truth or deny our truth, right? Mercury trining Jupiter, which it's going to be because both are going to be retrograde. This is lessons in how are you going to create self-reliance? Are you going to not to deny your personal truth? Or are you going to stand within your personal truth and your authenticity? Pluto and Capricorn retrograde gives us ample time to show, are you able to, you know, depend on yourself? And are you able to be within your own integrity and to create your own inner authority? It, it's all of this is coming up right now. And so I want us to be aware of it. I want us to work with the energy. So that's working with our evolution. However, this is being reflected in your life right now. Astrology is not causative. It is only reflecting what is already going on. And if you have a lot of stuff coming up for you right now, a good thing would be to, especially if you want to understand all of this on a deeper level, because on some levels, what I'm doing is um, I'm speaking to this in a general way because I'm speaking to it on a collective way. Um, if you want to know more about what it is that your soul is desiring to do and to actualize right now have a reading it doesn't even have to be with me it can be with whomever because an astrologer who is able to look at your transits can really help and get to the bottom of whatever it is that you're wanting to work on right now so there's that i also want to say October 6th through 8th, I will be speaking at the Evolutionary Astrology Online Conference. I'm going over the asteroid Lilith and her notes. I am doing this with my colleague, Helena Garcia, who is extremely brilliant whenever it comes to looking at the myth and correlating the archetypes with other myths. 
I'm going to be doing the second half of the class where I'm going over how to implement this in your chart, what it means in your chart, and how to work with Lilith. If you want, you can register at jwgaea.org. You can use the coupon code Pluto, receive 10% off the registration. You don't even have to sign up for the whole thing. If you don't want to, you can sign up for you know, you can just have a class pass. It doesn't even have to be mine. It can be anyone's. So I thought that that was really cool for me to mention. I will put a link in the description of this video for you guys. If you want to see me and book an appointment, I will put my website information there. Also, I want to say this to people on my website. I used to say this a lot and I quit saying it, but I'm going to say it again. There is so much inflation going on. All of us can be having difficulty with groceries or this or that and still be experiencing life and wanting some type of counseling or some type of guidance through astrological counseling or traditional counseling. On my website, it says it is $200 for a natal reading. I don't care about that. That is a standard thing. If you are wanting a reading and you cannot afford that, do not be afraid to email me and say, I can only pay this much. Can you work with me? Or can I make a payment plan? I don't mind at all. I will never judge. We've all been in situations, maybe not all of us, but I know I have in the past. And if you feel like this would benefit you, don't deny yourself that. I am never going to judge someone who is asking for help and who is willing to help themselves. So reach out if that is something that you want to do. Let me know. I am here. I do these videos for free because I like helping people. Um, I do also have to make a living, but I like working with people not everyone can afford $200 and I do not expect them to. And I also don't want to deny people who feel called or feel like they can benefit from having a reading. And so I just wanted to state that for all of you guys. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a beautiful week. I will be here next week and I will see you all then.